you know, I've done a few sessions for like Rihanna or a few sessions for, you know, huge, huge artists that everybody, when they walk into those rooms, they're like, okay, what do they want? What does the label want? What is the sound that they want? What, and whereas I go into a room and I'm thinking, and oh, what all great writers do, you go into a room and you think, what do I want to hear this artist do? What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. Here we have a very special guest, as you can see, to my right, two-time Grammy Award winner, Gino the Ghost, talker, professional talker. Mm. This guy has one of the, the most, I don't, know, uh, I don't know how to even term it, but let's just say one of the most interesting podcasts, a random podcast with a lot of viral clips that are on my feed all the time, but he's also a producer, all right, that has backed some of the tracks that many of you have already heard. Um, so let's get into this, man. But I want to start here. You are a songwriter and you are a producer. But sometimes don't producers get considered to be songwriters? Like this is weird, like line. So you're, it's a good question. You're credited a lot of times. Like if you look at the credits, they're credited as songwriters uh -huh. in many cases. You can also be credited as a producer too. But all producers are also credited as songwriters. And it's because technically you are writing music right? Like melodic melodies and that, you're, you're writing that music, but also in publishing, you're, you're getting publishing. So technically like being published on a record, you're a published writer on a song, Got if you will. It. And I think more songwriters should be credited as producers because a lot of songwriters don't realize they also be producing sometimes, you know? In what way? I, I think people think that like, Producing is just literally like making a beat. Um, and that is the case like most times probably, but a lot of times as a, as a songwriter, you're making plays, you're putting records together. You know, like if you're a big writer, you're like, oh, I can get this to so-and-so artist. Or like, oh, I could get this to this, you know, I can make this play happen. Yeah. And if you think of like traditional producing back in the day, and like if you think of like film producing, yeah. you're kind of, you're producing, you know? And a lot of writers, like I'm very hands-on, I'm a vocal producer, I'm arranging, I'm in the Pro Tools session. I'll kick the engineer out the chair a lot of times, and a lot of writers do that. And in the process, a lot of times, you're kind of producing or cr coming up with ideas that, and it's tough for writers because you make no money as a writer. You don't get a, you don't get a song fee, you don't get any points on the master. It's very difficult to monetize, and through like royalties, Wait, which, which which writer are we talking about right now? The, like the song, the person who's writing the lyrics. A songwriter. Yes. They don't. They don't get any what? Money. <laughs> <laughs> Currency. <laughs> they don't make any fucking money. Um, and it's been. Explain. Explain. It's been the real fight. You know, back in the day. You know, back in the day, you could have like an album cut, on like the Celine Dion album that like track eight that nobody even fucking knows, mm -hmm. unless you're like a huge Celine Dion fan. And you could have gone and bought a house off that because the Celine Dion album went like quadruple platinum yeah. and, and those are physical sales, $20 a pop. You know what I mean? And just by being on that album, you're making so much money, you know? And the issue today in the streaming era is that not only are those streams not worth shit, 0 0.003 cents a stream, but because there's no physical sales, just being on a project. Like I could get a cut on the Beyonce album and make like $1,500 off it. That's how crazy I'm talking. Yeah. Like if you're not on radio, if you're not touching nine digit streams, eight digit streams, you're not really seeing any bread as a writer, which is crazy to think about, but there's just not any money in publishing right now. So as a writer, you, it's your job to become more than a writer not in a greedy way, because you don't want to be fabricating stuff and trying to like take money that's not yours, but learn how to vocal produce, learn how to produce in a way, but also just like when you were a big enough writer and a part of the fight that I'm really trying to mobilize, we need to shift the way we pay. And, and when I say we, I mean the labels and the artists, yeah. because songwriters aren't making any money and they're leaving because they're not, you know, 
as a writer, you should be getting a point on the master. You should be getting a track fee, like a producer gets. Doesn't need to be anything crazy, but the reality is like, these labels are making more money than God right now, because they're making more money than they've ever made. And writers are making dirt. So I've taken it upon myself and a bunch of other fortunate established writers to be like, hey, you want this record? I need a point. This is my fee. If you don't want to pay it, that's fine. We'll give it to somebody else. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, what are the conversations like with the people you're, you're putting those stipulations with? Because like you said, it's not the norm. Yeah. It's something that you and writers are, are working yeah. to, to, a lot to of the thing. A lot of the A&Rs now are kind of aware that this is starting to happen. And, and they, most of the conversations I have, even with people that I'm like cool with, A&Rs I'm cool with, ah, you know, Look, you know I'm like team songwriter. You know I want to like, but it's just, we don't, the label doesn't want to set any precedents and like we don't really pay songwriters. And then what I say is, word, well, I'm actually quite literally trying to set a precedent. That's the fucking point of this. We're trying to set a precedent. So it's like, I don't really want to hear that. And I'm fortunate in a position through other ventures and other things where I don't need the money. So like, I'd rather make a stand and just be like, eh, okay, well. So the conversation is usually like that. I play hardball, because you have to. You gotta know your worth. And then eight times out of 10, we talk to the label. Lo and behold, they have a budget, <laughs> you know? It's there. It's you there. Got the, budget, the money's man. there. They got it. <laughs> it says, do they want to pay you, you know? Yeah. You said something interesting that I've never thought of in terms of the old school version of things when we talk about buying something on a CD, you're buying a project as a whole. Yeah. And it made me think about today, you can have an album, but things are individualized. You know, fans are picking and choosing songs. Yeah. Has that like significant, outside of like the fact that streams just pay less money, does that change how a writer is paid? Where if I'm on Beyonce's album in 2000 and I don't know, three, and I did track four, how do I even know how much action that song got versus another another yeah. song versus today? Well, that song might completely bomb and not get streams. Like, does that change how It changes happens? a lot of things. It changes, yeah, literally, like, getting paid. Yeah. You don't make any money. It changes how the label approaches a release because now you're paid on volume. So if you look at like what Chris Brown did and what a lot, of, like it's like 30 song albums. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. And you, and it changes how labels and artists approach creation and songwriters and producers approach the creation of records. Because for example, when I go in a session, I'm not making like a mid tempo. I'm not going to create something cool and artsy to pitch to, I need to create a hit because I need to make fucking money and I need this song to get chosen by the label, and they're not gonna pick the song if it doesn't have tempo. It doesn't sound like a hit. It doesn't sound sticky. Because they are putting, the album is now comprised of, is this a single, is this a single? They're all trying to be singles. All right. Which makes the overall product, just, you, know, you know when you used to listen to albums back in the day, you would listen to that bitch front to back, yeah. and it was like a story, and it was cohesive, and that's why, Albums like you know certain like the Kent, like Good Kid, Mad City, and those albums are like they tell a story and they're so cool. And even like old Beyonce albums and like you know Jay Z albums, they they tell a story. Well, today, even Beyonce albums, they got it's just all hits. They got to be all singles, you know. So, so yeah, that's the short. That's the long answer. Artists, managers, there is no way you should ever do a regular pre-save campaign again because Forever Fan has Forever Saves where a fan could pre-save your music one time and then automatically pre-save every song you ever release after that. That's right, forever. And on top of that, Forever Fan has email and texting all in one platform. This is built out for artists who don't have huge teams and don't wanna get overwhelmed doing too many things in too many different places. So go to foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, that's no labels with an S, and put in the code no labels 2 to get access and try it out for only a dollar. 
Forever Fan is your go-to place for your marketing needs as an artist so you can stay organized, have your own infrastructure to make it a lot easier to go to the next level. Again, that's foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels and type in the code no labels O2 at checkout to get access for only a dollar. Now back to the episode. Feeling being under the influence as a writer. Of drugs? <laughs> <laughs> of this current industry. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. You need to churn out a hit. What does that mean when they're looking for a hit or you're doing something that you know that they're going to think could be a hit? Because we know yeah. anything technically could be a hit and we just don't know it's coming. All right? It could be a slow song. It's yeah. like for whatever reason it actually connected. But like you said, that most likely won't see the light of day and get the chance because of what the labels receive. So is there any bit of formula there that, you the, know? The problem yeah. is, like, most writers are chasing hits because of this all the time. I mean, writers always chase hits, but you, you don't get to decide what a hit is. It's not up to you. And the label doesn't know what a hit is. They wouldn't know a fucking hit if it hit them over the head. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So there's been cases where, like, I had a song that made an album, and the single that was chosen, they got a big feature on it. This is the single. It comes out. Nothing. Falls flat. Well, then all of a sudden, this song starts moving organically on TikTok, and then this song goes crazy. And then all of a sudden, the label's like, okay, this is the next single. And then everybody in the building takes credit, and, you know, that's how it goes. But yeah. you don't, the, the streets chose that as the hit, and it doesn't always work out that way because they don't always hear it. But songs that go viral, usually, whether you like them or not, go viral for a reason. And so when you're approaching, like, making a record, I always, like, a great example is, like, for, like, I, you know, I've done a few sessions for, like, Rihanna or a few sessions for, you know, huge, huge artists that everybody, when they walk into those rooms, they're like, okay, what do they want? What does the label want? What is the sound that they want? What? And whereas I go into a room and I'm thinking, and all, what all great writers do, you go into a room and you think, what do I want to hear this artist do? There's a great quote from Brian Cranston, who's, uh, if you don't know who Brian Cranston yeah, is, I know that. you back home. <laughs> uh, he's the great actor. He was, you know, Breaking Bad is like his big fucking, th anyway. He's got a quote. He's talking about auditioning. And he said, when I was younger and I was trying to like make it big in acting, I would go into an audition and I was always so nervous and I was like, what do they want? Like, what character do they want? Like, I would read the character briefs and try to figure out what is the character that the, the, the casting director wants me to be. And I need this. Like, I need this part. I need this part would change my life. I need this part. And I would go into those auditions and that's how that would be my mindset. Until one day I realized I don't need this part. They need to find the right part. That casting director's job is dependent on finding the right part. And if they don't, they won't have a job. And not only that, they don't really know what the fuck they want. They have an idea of what they want. But it's my job as an actor to give them what I want. This is what I would do if I was this character and how I perceive this character. And I'm going to give it to you. And you're either going to take it or not. I don't give a fuck. I got another audition tomorrow. And it's the same approach with songwriting. It's like, I don't need this Rihanna cut. And like, I know you're getting a hundred people trying to give you the same fucking thing. So I'm going to give you what I think will be cool that Rihanna did and what I want to hear Rihanna do. And I'm going to put my own fucking spin on it. And if you like it, dope. If you don't, I don't give a fuck. I got another session tomorrow. You know? And that's the approach you got to take. Because otherwise, you'll drive yourself crazy because you're chasing. Yeah. You know? That's... That's brilliant because not only does it depersonalize it in a way that allows you to do a better job mm -hmm. because you're focusing on the actual thing, yeah. but it's more than what I would call like motivational fluff. It's something that's actually true, right? Like if I'm somebody who's, if I'm a casting director, I am just looking, I just need to see as many options as possible and oh, that's, that's it, right? It's not really about you, it's just about what you produced yeah. and, and it's not a like you or, or not because an artist can be in a certain phase at the moment and I'm looking how to express X, Y, and Z. Yeah. This connects, there, there it is versus you probably could have produced as an artist 
a creative, you could probably produce multiple variations. It's just up to which variation you give them, yeah. which is a, a interesting thing. I got actually, I, I had a thought and I want to ask you what your perception of this is. So, you know how country is like trending right now? Yeah. And then Afro Beats started its trending, you know, a little bit, bit back ago. I talked to a lot of artists and there's so many artists that speak about, you know, art is about me and what I think and what I feel, right? That's like the in front of the curtains talking that they put out there. But when you really talk to a lot of artists behind the scenes, I see so many of them speaking away where I'm like, are you really doing this country thing because that's you and your expression? Or are you really doing it because it's hot right now? Are you doing Afro beats because it's like hot right now? Are you doing this Latin thing? You know, and I think there's one version of there's this thing that's available. Like, let's just say, you know, you're Latin and you might not have done it, that type of music because you just knew there was no chance for it, right? And now it's popping. It's like, okay, well, I can show that side of myself. There are some real things in that aspect. But a lot of these, I feel like a lot of artists are really just chasing trends in a similar way. Like, that, that's moving. Do you find that to be true for, for artists beyond just songwriting for somebody else? I think, you know, as a consumer, too, I'll look at it. Well, from, from all angles, really. If you look at, like, like look at Beyonce. Yeah. She just put out a country album. Yeah. Everyone's like... Why the fuck is she putting on a country album? She had never done country, you know. But she's from Texas, and she's like born country. She's country, you know. And and maybe she's always wanted to do country. And why the fuck not? She's in a position, fortunately, where she can just do it because it's still gonna go number one, you know. And it was great because she's fortunate to work with like incredible creatives that could bring the vision of I want to do country music to life. I think a lot of artists, until you get in that position, it, it is a different game than it used to be, where like, yeah, you do kind of have to, if you, I mean, look at Post. Like Post Malone had to make like hip hop leaning, yeah. you know, and he, what was cool is he kind of made his own sound by like lending his upbringing to a culture that he wasn't a part of, you know? He got to work in like, hip hop and like urban music and he's like I'm just a white dude but he, it was so like fresh sounding cuz it had like influences of rock and all this stuff that he actually was interested in but he had to lean into rap because that was and still is the hottest genre yeah. and it was a unique sound and it, it popped him off and now he's like yeah but my real passion is like folk music and, like I grew up like playing guitar and doing like folk and like that's what I want to do so now he can do that because he's he he made it he got on you know and I think a lot of people like and this is a usually taboo for like a white guy to have this conversation but like you see a lot of artists who like will will pull from from like rap to try to get on yeah. and until they do and then it looks like well now oh great they borrowed and then they left a lot of people yeah they didn't really it's not that they were trying to appropriate they just that's what the label wanted them to do, or that's what they thought the trend they had to chase to do. And then once they got on, they can then go do what they want to do. But there's a lot of cases where like it doesn't work out. Like oh, yeah. Sabrina Carpenter is a perfect example. I remember years ago, I got a record with Sabrina Carpenter, mm -hmm. and it's like a rap, it's like a hip hop leaning, it's like trap drums. It's like oh, I've never heard that one. No one has really, <laughs> because they were trying to figure out what to do with her for so long. Like they couldn't figure out her sound. And like, I'm sure Sabrina Carpenter was probably not like, I want to make a rap song and like have Sweetie on it. And like, but that's what the label was like. This is what is hot right now. Let's make her do this. And look at Sabrina Carpenter. She, she's just like, she can't do that. <laughs> you know, I mean, she can do anything, but like, yeah. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear that sweet espresso. Yeah. And she did that yeah. and it popped the fuck off. And now she's on tour with fucking Taylor Swift. And like, that's the sound. Yeah. So... <laughs> Kind of a roundabout answer, but like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. No, nah, I didn't see the Sabrina Carpenter one coming. That's it, bro. Yeah. Sabrina Carpenter with a truck drone sounds disgusting. 
<laughs> you, you don't want to hear that. You know, <laughs> like nobody wants to hear that. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.